What's up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. That is Matt. Matt, right. everybody, everybody Matt. <laughs> yeah. um, Matt is the fella from work who fixes everything. But he's not at work anymore because he's he's got a big spanky job elsewhere, as I said. Anyway, he's down here wiring it up because I ain't got a clue about contactors and all that other stuff. And he sort of does it for a living, so jobs are good. Where's that contactor thing? So I haven't shown them like that. The contactor. Yeah. So that's what I don't know. <laughs> you see that? Yeah, apparently that's a contactor. I ain't got a clue how they work, but apparent what is it? There's a you energize the bottom bit, that's so a coil. There's a magnetic coil. There's a magnetic it energizes, coil. It energizes, it pulls in contactors, which make the circuit. Oh right, there you go. So when you energize that bit it pulls this bit down to on QC in there. And that's what makes all the circuits and stuff. Um, this ain't new, but he reckons it's gonna work. So we're gonna wire it up. Um, I've just got to get a cable somehow around the back of that lot. And he can faff about doing all this. Jobs are good. Right, it is now Thursday. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun. Um, <clears throat> all I've done is I've uh, filed out a slot in this and I've made up a little key to go onto this shaft for the main motor. Just because, go on, get on. Just because I'm not happy with it just being a grub screw. <laughs> So he goes on there, it's a nice snug fit. It's opposite the, um, oh, where'd I put them? It's opposite the grub screw. So that'll help clamp everything together and stuff. And it just means I get a bit more of a positive, you know, engagement between the pulley and the shaft when we get the motor sorted. Uh, Matt was a diamond. He hasn't finished wiring it all in yet. Uh, this apparently is a capacitive motor, which I never knew even existed. <laughs> Um, but there's a couple of capacitors that live under, underneath here, underneath this cover, 
is where all the electrical connections go. And obviously wires just go in there with a the grommet and whatnot. Um, but there's a couple of capacitors that's missing. One is needed to start it and the other is needed for continual running. So he's researching the motor, he's gonna get some capacitors and then we can get it shoved in there and get it sorted. So that shouldn't take too long. And with the pulley done, we are basically in. So now I've got to sort out my wiring and cable tie that up. Right, this is the old tool post. Um, basically, this it fits on top of the compound here. Um, so there's a shaft that runs through the middle of it. Um, there's a T-nut on the bottom of that that sits in this groove on the compound. Um, and it works, nothing wrong with it at all. Um, it's just that it's not a quick change one. And when you're doing something, I want to be able to switch out tools real quick and not have to reshim them and line them all up with the tail stock and all that kind of stuff. So basically I went for a quick change one, which is this. Um, we did have to do a few modifications. This shaft here, that's a Whitworth thread on the end of it. Uh, and it's all hardened. Uh, if you drag a file across it, you, you ain't gonna mark it or anything else. Um, but it didn't fit in the hole for my new quick change jobby. Um, so I uh, went into work and had a chat with Brett in the machine room and he made me another one that's a little bit longer. Um, he's put a metric thread on the end just with a, like a nylock nut and everything else and it all fits in a tree. Really, really does. I can put a regular spanner on top of this, undo it, and I can change my tool post and reset it to any angle that I want and everything else. So this can go back on. And then I'll show you the tool post holders because they're quite cool. Um, Let's get this on first. Right, so he goes on there, and locked down by these two Allen grub screws. And pom pom pom. I need to sort the gibs out on that as well. That is a little bit tight. What sort of span is that? <laughs> Nineteen. That'd be it. So I can loosen that nut off, turn my tool post to wherever I want it, and obviously you can see this whole thing just comes off because it's on a T nut that sits in here. That's all been thread locked into there. There are spanner flats on this main shaft as well, so that's been properly tightened down and then thread locked. So he can live in there like that. I can stick him wherever I want and then just lock him down. So I think I've got a spare 19mm spanner. All I'm going to do is lop it off because I don't need all that. And I've got, I think I've got three of them. So I'm just going to lop it off, round the edges over, and then I've got something that I can, you know, just keep with the machine and use it for whatever. So he can stay there for the minute. Where's my tool posts? All right, and these are my tool posts. So you can adjust them up and down on here, which is quite cool. And that's just like a locking, locking bolt. But essentially, you stick your tool in here and clamp it all down. Then it'll just slot on top and get locked in place. And that's it, jobs are good. And when you want to put a different tool in, you just undo that, whip it off, stick another one on, and you're away. So that's all right, isn't it?
Right, so it's all basically there, pretty much. I'm only waiting on a couple of bits. I have got a broken tooth on the back gear, so I'm not gonna be able to use the back gear until I get a replacement for it. Uh, and that really reduces the speed of the machine, you know, as far as spindle speeds and stuff goes. I'll get a picture and stick it up just so you can see what's what, but I'm not running it with that, because that's bound to muller something. But we've got all the covers on, back one, the side one, all the drivetrain is back in the side. So once it is finished wiring up and it's all connected, it's going to go around. Uh, Matt is he's researching the the motor to just to get me those capacitors. It's a real quick job. All he's got to do, I've got to buy a plug for the other end. Either that or maybe a junction box which just hard wire it in. Don't it? I might do that. All the cables zip side up out the way. Just uh, if I'm pulling stuff off and on the shelves. Um, I don't want to snag the wire or anything else, so that's just tidied up and, you know, squirreled around the back of all that malarkey. Um, we are pretty much there. Made my handle. Um, the cross slide lead screw was supposed to be turning up today, but I've got to tip off to my work. Because it's now half past twelve, so I've only had a couple of hours on it. But we are, we are like this close. I'm getting it going this week, I'm hoping. It all depends when Matt can get the capacitors. Um, but that's pretty much the last thing. All the keyways done, so I'm happy with that. I'll need to adjust it once it's in there just to get the pulleys lined up. But we're basically in. Um, I am going to have a crack at this tomorrow purely because I'm hoping the cross slide's going to be here and they'll have it in the office. So I'll get that shoved in. Um, there really isn't that much more to do. And then I'm, there's probably not going to be another lathe video for a little bit because you know, Matt's got to do his thing. I've got to get used to it. I will show you starting it up and doing the first bits and pieces and Brett's going to come in. He's going to do a run out on it for me because I've not done one before. But that's just to make sure that I don't end up cutting tapers into everything that I do. Essentially, it doesn't matter if, you know, the whole thing isn't absolutely completely level, but we need to check and make sure there's no twist in the bed. And you can sort that out just by shimming it under the mounting points. So as you twist it, essentially the tool post moves in and out a tiny bit. So we'll have to get a DTI on it and see what's what. And then we've just got to do the left and right alignment for the tail stock. And then we're there. We're there. Right, safe to say, summer is officially over in Plymouth. Blowing a bloody hooli down here. Can you hear the shop door going? It is windy and raining and everything. Anyway, um, just been down to the office to pick up my cross slide. Couldn't, because it's not here. So some fella's about to get it down the phone because it was supposed to be here yesterday. Um, we really haven't got that much to do. Cross slide when it comes in, that's just simple. That's just whack it in, shove a grub screw in, jobs are good and that's easy. Um, I need to put some shelves in it uh, it's got like lips in there for you know like little brackets that you can stick a wooden shelf and I've got some plywood in the back so I'll have that out in a second I'll cut up some bits and shove them in so that's it and literally all we're waiting on is Matt to um, wire up the motor with these capacitors that he's getting we can hoof that back in stick a drive belt on it boom we're in um, oh yeah I've got this thing as well might be redoing this because I did it wrong. <laughs> it's just a panel to put a light switch on. Yeah, I, 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 I might do, I might redo this, do it a little bit differently, I don't know. But um, this is just going to go in to fill that hole up on the front of the lathe for now. Um, it's just two gang switch and all it's going to do is drive a submersible pump for the coolant uh, and also run a work light. But I haven't got a submersible pump for the coolant or a work light at the minute, so it's just going to sit there and do nothing for now. <laughs> but it will bung the hole up, so that's all right. Um, but yeah, so I'll get that done. But I suppose we might as well start on shelves, eh? Right, shelves.
know all the post he's been. I'm hoping this is the cross slide. I did phone up and give him grief, it has to be said. <laughs> oh, sweet! Oh, that's gonna do. That's gonna do a treat. And it looks in good nick too. So theory says, Get in. That's going to go. Thing is, I can always, it's an English one, it's an Imperial one. Um, I do want to give it a bit of a tidy up and a clean first. And I can always just change the nut out, which I might even do actually, thinking it through. Don't want to do that. Right, we're well, basically there. Um, I've made this, I've got, to, I've got to trim the, the bolts and stuff down, but that's basically just going to get drilled in the corners and mounted on there. So that'll happen at some point. Um, the cross slide is all on and it works a treat. I do need to muck about my gibs. <laughs> there is no wiggle in it at all. I ended up changing the, the nut. There's a brass nut um, with like a boss that goes through the casting um, that this lead screw goes through. Um, this one just seemed to be a bit better on this shaft than the other one did. It's all still Imperial, it's just this one is betterer, so I'll put this one on. <laughs> um, it all works lovely, I need to tighten the handle up, but that's like, you know, as it is. But we is basically in, that's it, done. I can't really do any more now until uh, Matt has wired it in, and then we can get the drive belt on put it under some power and see what happens um, and I'm looking forward to that it has to be said it's all greased up all oiled up um, I've got some grease nipples coming so I'm just changing these these caps out you, you undo these and there's like another thread and you're supposed to be able to get adapters for a grease gun that you wind on there and then you can pump the the, the grease straight into the spindle bearings um, I've just got some replacement grease nipples, so they're going to get replaced because my grease gun ain't got that adapter. So that's easy enough. The new back gear is on its way. That's all ordered. So we'll stick that in and then I can use the back gear and stuff and that's it, sorted. Jobs are good un. Job is a very good un actually. <laughs> oh, I'm chuffed with this. Right, this has been quite the journey actually. I've enjoyed doing this. At yeah, we've got the lathe. It did look a little bit sorry for itself. I'll see if I can find the picture and stick it up again. But it did not look happy. And to see it now, I mean, it just looks 100 times better. It really, really does. And everything's clean and all the grot is gone and there's no grit and, you know, everything. It all seems to work quite nicely and blah, blah, blah. I mean, it don't look too bad either, I don't think. So, you know, for the sake of 500 quid and a few weeks chucked at it, I think it's been time well spent. Thank you ever so much for all the comments as well. There's been loads of people chipping in with helpful sites and a bit of advice and blah, 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 blah. And it's been really, really good. Um, found some good sources of parts and, you know, information and just reference material and all that sort of stuff. And it's all down in those comments. So thank you ever so much for that. I really do appreciate it. There's, there's obviously some machinists that have been watching this because they're chipping in with all sorts of stuff. And it's good. Um, I am not a machinist. I have to make that perfectly, perfectly clear. I'm not a machinist. I'm just a fellow with a workshop that can really do with a lathe to make some of the bits and pieces that I want to be making for the bikes. Um, I've played about with lathes. I know the basics and this and the other, but I'm not skilled at it. I've got an awful lot of learning to do. And I'll get that. So I'll show you the first chips that we make <laughs> just because then you can see it all going and whatnot. But then you're probably not going to see a great deal because I'll be cocking it up left, right and Chelsea as I'm getting it wrong. <laughs> but oh, you're going to see me make some stuff. It's just you might have to wait a little bit for it. Um, like I say, I've got to go to school on this. <laughs> um, the um, back gear is on its way. That's coming from 
fella called Mark who runs uh, Simply Lace. I want to say they're in Bolton. I could be wrong. I think it's Bolton anyway, but you know, check out the website, Simply Lades. Um, Tony has been blinding at lades.co.uk. These people are a little bit cheaper than him, and the guy specializes in Boxwoods, and he's been doing it for years and stuff as well. And the, the bits that I couldn't find, like I couldn't find the back gear anywhere. There wasn't any on eBay, you know, the, nothing. Tony, he ain't got any. There's a couple of other people I tried, they ain't got any. This fellow Mark, he seems to have a shelf full. <laughs> um, cross slides and stuff as well. He was dead helpful coming out with information on that. You know, he's just, he's another really good source. So if you have got an old boxer, you need a few bits and pieces. Mark at Simply Lades. Um, I think it's .co.uk, but just Google Simply Lades and you'll find him. Really nice chap. And he's a biker. He had a baby blade, a CBR 400RR that he put around track days and stuff. So we had a good old natter about that. But he sounds like a really cool bloke. Um, so that's where I'm gonna leave it. We're back on Jixit at the weekend. Steve-O is absolutely down. I phoned him every day to confirm it. He's down here and we've got stuff that we need to be doing. And probably the first thing I'm gonna be making on the lathe is that top shock mount um, for the rear suspension. Cause that one ain't gonna do. And I've got a mill, so I can do half of it, but the round bits I couldn't do. Oh, I can now. Well, once I get a full jaw chuck and maybe a couple of other bits and bobs. But that's probably going to be the first little project that I have a go at. Um, I will film it, you will see it. Don't laugh too much. I'm new to this. <laughs> but that's where I'm leaving it. Thank you ever so much for watching, and we'll see you again next time. Later!